The building is significant to us because it represents a unique opportunity to work on an 18th century English architecture building which is in the style of a Chinese pagoda. One of the few surviving examples of Chinese chinoiserie, making the building exceptionally important. Looking at early etchings by Sir William Chambers, we know that there were features on the roofs of this building and those features were large external dragon sculptures. The dragon story here is really interesting. It's always been of mystery, the dragon, what the beast looked like, and there's no exception here. We don't have an example of these dragons. We only have painted information in terms of watercolours and oil paintings and original etchings. Unfortunately, we don't have a physical dragon. Were they taken away? Did they blow away? Did they just rot and fall off? We certainly know they disappeared. The research carried out by historic royal palaces involved every possible image of English chinoiserie dragons, every, every possible dragon form. The difficulty we had is then reinterpreting that into a 21st century object. We've had to be very innovative in not just the form of the design and how that design will be mated to the original building, but we're going to have to move into an area of new technology and new techniques and new skill sets. We're creating a hybrid building at the end of the day. We're producing modern dragons. There's going to be 80 dragons back on the building. Part of the reason to put them into a sintered laser form is they will be very light in weight and their effect on the structure is therefore minimal. We've blended old and new in that we will have traditionally carved dragons on the building and we will have modern printed dragons on this building. And I think that is where old can meet new and it can be done in a harmonious way. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who wonder, well, why are you investing in heritage? What, what does it give us? I say, well, if, if we're not being informed by the past, what has actually informed us? And this is a tangible link back to the 18th century, back to what this garden was like, who commissioned it, why was it commissioned? Once you know the history, once you know the social stories related to it, the whole excitement level builds. It's educational, emotionally rewarding, and it appeals at all different levels. And that's why conservation is important. We are really pleased to be working with Historic Royal Palaces on this project because they as a charity are investing in heritage. They're an enlightened client and it's good that they want to do that because what they're saving are these buildings, but they're saving all the stories, all the emotional attachment to these buildings. All of that relates to any type of building that we have in our society, whether you own a museum, whether you own your own house, or whether it's your local church. All of those have an emotional attachment to us in the current day, and all of that past is enriching our present existence. We want to be authentic as possible, and we want to bring that authenticity from natural research about the building. And one of the key things you can use for that is a sort of forensic examination of paint. Nowadays you can have every possible colour you can imagine produced in a tin for you. But in the old days it wasn't like that. In a building like this, it can tell you so much about the building's development and how it originally looked. You would take layers of paint off the object, you would uh, microscopically examine the, the surface of them and the thickness of them, and from that you begin to arrive at what the colour was and what the chemical constituents were. And that gives you an idea of the age of the paint and therefore when it was applied to the walls and therefore how old the building is. All our projects involve historic research and in the conservation sector. Whether that's a library, a theatre, a museum, we'd always do a level of historic research to give us information about the development of the building, who was involved and therefore its significance and therefore how we should treat it. And that's basically just good conservation practice.